All right, guys, woke up to a flat tire today. I'm guessing there's a nail in it somewhere. I'm gonna show you guys how to remove it, how to find the nail and then mark it up with some chalk. That way it's easy for the technicians to find it and patch it from the inside if it's patchable and not on the wall. So uh, let's get to it. So I just use the scissor jack that comes with the car and then I use a drill to uh, quickly lift and lower it. It's a lot easier than using my floor jack, which is a lot heavier. So we'll take that. Jack hardware is also inside this bag. It was just behind the spare tire in this car. Mazda 2021 CX-9. Now you can use your, that, that car jack hardware that comes with your car if you want. I like to do mine a little bit easier way though. Um, I'm using a one and one eighth inch socket which goes around this pretty easily. And then what we're gonna use is use a drill with a half inch drive adapter to drill bit adapter. It goes right in here. It's gonna go right in your drill bit. And then you'll use the drill to raise and lower your jack. I uh, use the high torque setting, which is lower speed setting. So you can get more uh, torque on the uh, jack. I'll show you guys that. Okay, I did wanna mention this to you guys also. I do have the emergency brake on. Um, and in park, obviously, but I know that's not obvious to everybody, so just want to make sure I mention that. I'm going to show you guys how to get these lug nuts off. I'm actually using a an electronic uh, impact wrench instead of pneumatic, uh, quite frankly, because it's just a lot easier to not have to deal with anything, air and hoses and all that, just a cord, and that's it. I absolutely love it uh, ever since I got one. I'll show you guys that. Now the trick is to find out where to properly jack the car and you want to do it on the frame. What you're looking for is these ribs that are underneath here and then the right above that is part of the frame as well. And these are your good jacking points. You don't want to jack where there's plastic trim. Also start slow with just a little bit of range to see if anything will bend and the frame bends you don't you want to stop and make sure you you clarify where exactly you're supposed to be jacking the car up. Make sure you guys how it's done. Low torque or high torque setting, sorry. And then you basically using that and just be low speed low speed. That's it. Tires off the ground. You can't really see the angle here, but the tire is off the ground. And then what I like to do is I'll throw a jack stand under here too, just in case something happens with this jack, just as a set, extra safety measure. I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, those same ribs on the frame that you wrapped your, or that you have your scissor jack wrapped around. It's the same one I have my uh, jack stand wrapped around, just as a backup in case it falls, which I've never had that happen, but it's just an extra good fail safe in case it does come down. Real quick, if you guys were going to do this by hand, this hardware that came with your jack kit, would go right in there. Then, torquing, you're gonna need this handle. This helps give you levers to turn. You guys can see that. It gives you levers to turn clockwise and counterclockwise. That scissor jack it gives you just an extra handle to uh, torque that thing by hand if you don't have a drill. All right, you guys can see here, I've got a DeWalt electronic impact wrench and uh, love this thing. This thing's really got a lot of torque. It's got a toggle trigger, so you can reverse by pushing this top one or go f uh, forward. As you can see, the lettering on there too, R and F, uh, but it is wonderful. I'm going to show you guys, show you it in action. All right, here we go. And by the way, for this Mazda, these stock uh, rims, this is a 13... 16th socket all right here we go and this one does not have any locking lug nuts on it so they're all stock this last one we're probably gonna have to get a torque wrench on that one all right guys to get more leverage i'm using a torque wrench and this is a half inch extension um I believe that's a 12 inch extension I've got on there. And then I'm gonna put my socket on the end. So basically what we're doing is creating a longer lever to get more torque on that one 
uh, lug nut that's sticking. I'll show you guys. And we'll see. See if I can get it off of there. Because that impact wrench just doesn't quite hat quite enough torque to get it out. And there we go. That's lit. Got it loose. That's all there is to it. So sometimes you just need a bigger lever to get these things off of there. tire off and see if we can find where the nails at all right guys now that we found the leak dried it up I'm gonna mark it up with a wax pencil so the technician can very easily find it when they're searching for it you just bring this to a tire shop a lot of them will do it for free especially if you bought the tires from them um, or charge 10 or 20 bucks which is not bad instead of replacing a two or three hundred dollar tire all right guys so I found a piece of wood in here and pulled it out and uh, filled it back up with air. And in order to find out where the leak is, if it's not obvious, you can use soapy water and put it anywhere on the tire you think there may have been a puncture and you'll find the leak when it bubbles. That's how you find it. What I'm gonna do too is I'll mark it up with chalk um, or yellow wax pencil. That way it's easy for the technician to find it. Um, now the problem is on run flats, run flat tires technicians a lot of them say you can't repair it um just because of the material that the tires made of they don't feel comfortable doing it some just won't um but that's why that's one reason i avoid run flats i don't really like them for that reason they're they can't be repaired apparently um these aren't run flats which is fine with me i like the fact that these are easy to repair um, especially if they're in the middle of the tread now sometimes you can't repair them if you get a puncture like on a sidewall or something um, a lot of shops won't repair them if they're too close to the sidewall either. They don't like doing the patches there or the plugs. But this one's right in the middle, so it's a perfect spot for a plug or a patch. All right, got the tire back. Interestingly enough, they did a plug instead of a patch on the inside. But plugs work fine. Never had an issue with them. All right, get it remounted, and then I hand tighten them all first. Or hand start them, I should say. And then the last step is... I take the drill that I use on the jack, swap it to my socket, lug nut socket, and I just I slow and tighten these first. Oh, now we got one that didn't stay on as a hand tight one. My hand started. So I tighten them. I don't tighten them all the way, just a little bit to get them seated. That makes sense. Then I don't have to use the impact wrench. Don't worry about it being uneven. The reason I do this instead of the impact wrench because I've already put the impact wrench away and this is just easier on a little easier to start them without over to over torquing last step is going to be my torque wrench and we're going to use that torque wrench at 100 foot pounds I'll show you in a sec all right same wrench I broke broke them loose with we're going to tighten with and I've got it set to let's see 100 foot pounds you guys can see that there you go 100 foot pounds and then we're just gonna tighten them all and i do a crisscross pattern so it's evenly torqued i'll start here and then here there and then the last two that way it tightens evenly there you go you get them all properly torqued last step is gonna be lower it with the jack all right, last step, remove the jack stand. Come back with our one and one eighth socket. And we'll just lower it, pretty simple. Oh yeah, low, high torque setting, low speed. All right guys, that's a wrap. That's how you remove a tire and uh, troubleshoot a leak. And then raising and lowering it with the scissor jack, with the stock scissor jack. Please like and subscribe. Talk to you guys again soon. Thanks so much.